Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be back with you uh, again tonight. We'd love to be back in the house of the Lord. Uh, cases are still going up, as we know. 149, I believe, yesterday. That would have been Tuesday. Today's Wednesday. And, or something similar to that. Lord God, we'd love to get back in church and have some uh, cr a Christmas service at the very least. Uh, I've thought about it. thought about maybe doing three services at all and having a signed seat and that sort of nature by family. And I believe that would be okay. But we, we having so many cases, you know, that uh, I'm not sure where we'll be able to do that. We're hoping that will take place. Uh, you'll get some one calls and some personal calls we'll do and, and see if, if, it, if it can be possible. We'd love for it to take place. So be praying that way if you would. Pray for our health care workers. We know that the, uh, 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 what do you call those shots? Uh, uh, vaccinations for COVID-19 are about ready to get out to our hospital workers and that sort of nature. And that's going to help relieve some of that uh, concern because so many's in the hospital right now. So uh, let us turn tonight to the Galatians chapter number 2 and verses number 11. And let us read. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled, disassembled likewise with him insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we, we know that you're going to deliver us from these troubled times. God, we ask you right now, Lord, that you'd reach down your hand from heaven. God, that you would help us today to understand this scripture and convey it to others. And Lord, help us to remember, Lord, this scripture. For Lord, it's something that we need to remember. And God, Father, we're going to give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, we, to understand this scripture well, we need to understand some things. And first of all, the church was very young. Now, here in verses 12, it says, For certain came from James. Now, James is believed was Christ's brother, amen, half-brother. And glory to God, he was believed to be the leader of the Jerusalem church. And glory to God, they had sent someone from the main headquarters of the church there in Jerusalem. Glory to God from James, praise the Lord, to Antioch. Now, this is not believed to be the main Antioch that we see in Scripture, but it, I believe it to be the one over near Galatia. Amen. And glory, uh, we talked about that. We were studying the early churches here not long ago on Wednesday night. Amen. That there was two Antiochs. And uh, <clears throat> so James has sent... Uh, someone there to Peter with uh, uh, Antioch and glory to God when they came we see that Peter before they came had been eating with the Gentiles amen but when this person came he withdrew himself amen and separated himself from them and and uh, Paul will confront confronted him about this now, you say, Brother Jimmy, what, what was the problem here? The problem was is that many of the Jews, amen, who believed in Jesus still held with the circumcision, still had, held that you wasn't supposed to eat uh, with uh, uh, them that were not Jews. And we know that that's not the fact. We know that the blood of Christ set, uh, uh, broke down the middle wall petition between the Jew and the Gentile. We know that it was no longer circumcision, but it is the blood that Jesus Christ shed on Mount Calvary. Peter knew this. Paul knew this. The people of this church knew this. But there were some still trying to hold on to some of those things like circumcision. And, and so we see, amen, that instead of taking a stand because he knew better, we see that, that Peter uh, failed to do what he needed to do. He, he went over to the side and withdrew himself because he was worried about what somebody else saw and taking a take, instead of taking a stand for what he knew to be right. And glory to God, not only that, but others followed him. 
we see the word dissimulation, and it means deceit or hypocrisy, condemnation, uh, acting under a fringed part. And that's what he did. He, he was here today, and it was hypocrisy because he knew that there was nothing wrong with him eating with someone who had not been circumcised. He knew that there was nothing wrong with him uh, doing, uh, going and being a part of them. Glory to God, but he was worried. He was worried about the people that came from uh, James, that came that they might report. Uh, you know, he was worried about what somebody thought instead of, glory to God, what the word of God said, him taking a stand for what was right. And we see that Peter and Barnabas and the ones that followed after, they failed to take that right stand for God. They failed to do it. You know, it said even, even Barnabas was caught up in this dissimulation, this hypocrisy, this, this uh, condemnation, in other words, because in a way they were condemning the very ones that they had led to Christ. Amen? The very ones that they had told the blood washed away their sins. The very one they had told when what Christ did on Calvary, that he broke down that middle wall of petition. Now we want to turn to Acts 15 and 36. And we'll begin to read there. And remember, this was Paul that withstood uh, Peter, amen, here in Galatians 2. And now we're going to see Paul. And look here at Acts 15 and 36. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord. And see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them, uh, from them, from, and I can't pronounce the name of that place, and went not with them to the work. And contention was so sharp between them that they parted, departed asunder one from the other, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. Now, what we see here, we need to know a little history also. This was essentially the beginning of the second missionary journey, and glory to God, we know that Paul and Barnabas had won on the first one, and they had decided to go and visit all these places again to see how they were doing in the gospel. And we see also that John Mark here had messed up. John Mark on that first missionary journey, we don't know why he left, it doesn't tell, but somewhere along that way he left, and Paul wasn't pleased with that. He thought, no doubt, if you start a work, you need to finish it, or that's what it sounds like to me. But Paul here in this set of scripture, and Barnabas wanted to give him a second chance. You see, Paul failed to act like he should in this set of scripture. You know, he failed to show mercy. He, he was upset about this. Barnabas didn't do much better, amen, even though he was uh, standing up for John Mark. They both argued and acted in such a way that they shouldn't. We, we should never act that way, amen. And we all know that we've been all been guilty of it, though, don't we? But John Mark also failed here because he failed to do what he needed on the first missionary journey in my mind. So all three of the people that we see in this set of scripture failed to do something. And all of these men have something in common. They all failed. Almost all of them were leaders of the early church. And yes, those leaders, they failed. They failed to do things that they needed to do. Peter failed to stand up there Barnabas failed to stand for what he knew to be right with, uh, with the Gentiles there at Antioch when the man from uh, the James came who was from the lead, uh, uh, headquarters of the early church. And glory to God here, Paul and Barnabas failed to act like they should. Amen. John Mark failed to act like he should. And they were all just and good and righteous men. And you say, Brother Jimmy, how do you know that? How do you know? Because even though they fail, 
they all rose again. Proverbs 24 and 16 tells us this, For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. They didn't fall out into mischief of this world. They were righteous men. They were leaders of the early church. They just failed to do what they needed to do, just like you and I fail sometimes to do what we need to do. Amen. I'm glad for this scripture. Amen. Just means just, lawful, righteous men. And glory to God, I'm thankful today to know, amen, that even the best sometimes fall. That even the best sometimes fall, amen. I can tell you about what every one of these men would say if they were here today. And they would probably quote to you scripture. And I want to read to you three verses of scripture that I believe that Paul would probably read, that I believe that Peter would probably read, that I believe that Barnabas or any of these other men that fell, or John Mark or whoever it might be. And glory to God, they're these. Psalms 36 and 1, one of my favorite set of scriptures. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. I, I'm here to tell you that every time one of these men remember uh, this set of scriptures, uh, that they're, they're thinking no doubt about a verse or a verse just like this one or this one right here. They're glad that God's mercy endures forever. And church, I'm here to tell you tonight that I'm glad that his mercy endures forever. I'm glad that when we fall, we can find mercy. Amen. I'm glad that that access has been made. Oh, that I can pass through the veil. Glory to God that I can have access unto God the Father that mercy can be found. Oh, brother, there's no doubt in my mind that they would say First John 2 and 1, my little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not, but And if any man sin, we have an advocate with Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. I guarantee you that every one of them is glad that God's mercy endureth forever and that he's got an advocate in Jesus Christ to plead his case for that mercy. Amen. I'm glad tonight because I don't know about you, but as I read this scripture, I can see where I failed. And hopefully you can see where you failed over the years. And you're glad for that mercy. And you're glad that you have an advocate. And I love 1 John. You can't read 1 John 2 and 1 without reading 1 John 1 and 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. Oh, brother, I love remembering that he is faithful and just. <laughs> Glory to God to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, oh, glory. Hallelujah. I'm glad that he is faithful and just tonight. We're all going to mess up. We're all going to mess up. Even the best of us, even Peter, even Paul, even Barnabas, even John Mark, even me, even you, all of us are going to mess up. We are. You see, we're all on this journey of life. We're all on this course that we've been sent on. We all have a long and difficult process through this life till we get to heaven, till we get to the place, and one day we'll be perfect when we're put on that new body. Amen. And praise the Lord. Well, oh, that day there won't be no more sin. We won't be no more mess ups. We've all got a lot of personal development to take place and change in our lives. I don't know about you, but since the day I got saved, there's been a constant change. Praise the Lord, I read the scripture, it convicts me. I try to change and sometimes I do change and then I fall and I mess up and glory to God and I just got to keep on going. And I think that's for all of us. And I don't think I think we don't need to forget that we mess up. Glory to God and that God's mercy endures forever. I don't think we need to use that in the wrong way. But the devil likes to hand us a bat to beat us over the head. But we need to learn not to be too hard on someone that messes up. 
because it could be us the next time. You see, Paul was hard on Peter up here in Galatians. Glory to God, he was hard on him when he was recounting that in Galatians. But then Paul turned around and messed up right over here in Acts 15 with John Mark that he got in an argument with Barnabas and showed herself. Not acting the way they ought to act and doing the things they ought to do. Not being the kind of Christian that we all need to be. As we all have done, let us remember that, as we all have done. But brethren, I want to leave you with this scripture tonight, and I know it's one that you know and one that you've heard and one I've preached before and one that you've read, but it's one you need to be reminded of. And that's in Philippians 3 and 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Praise God, I've, I've not made perfection yet. You've not neither. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. Church, we can't do anything about all of our mess-ups. We can't do anything about it except plead the blood and talk to the Lord and try to do the best we can today and tomorrow. Praise the Lord, try to live this thing and take a stand for God. We can't do anything about it in fact, the Apostle Paul here had learned to forget about them. Just push them off to the side. Praise the Lord and, and just reach towards that high mark. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling. You see, we've been called to be like Christ. And that's a high calling. We've got to press towards that mark. We've got to forget our mistakes and our failures. Amen. But we don't need to forget our mistakes and failures so much that we can't remember that we have messed up and not be hard on others when they mess up. Because we all need that mercy. We all need that grace. We all are going to mess up somewhere along the way. We all need a loving hand and a word of encouragement. We all do. Let us remember that. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. Lord, we've endeavored to do your work and will, Lord. Lord, Father, we thank, hope, the Lord, that you will hide this within our heart and we'll, we'll receive it and, and remember, Lord, that we all mess up. We all need mercy. We all need grace. We all need this advocate. We all are thankful, Lord, that, that Jesus is faithful just to forgive us of our sins. God, Father, we're going to give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray.